Good. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. <laughs> and uh, for those who don't know me, I think you all know me, but for those who don't, my name's Colin, and that's Jan, my wife, and uh, we're from South End Vineyard Church, and uh, we just uh, love to be here and talk to you and uh, meet some old friends, which is very nice. So uh, let's just start with a, a quick uh, 
word of prayer, and then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll do a reading. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today, and we just pray, Lord, that uh, as we come to worship you, that you would be here. Lord, you'd, you'd send your spirit upon this place, Lord, upon Jan and I, and most important, upon everyone in the congregation, Lord. We just pray that you would open our hearts to hear your voice this morning, and that, Lord, we might know your presence with us. So bless us, we pray, Lord, and have your hand on all that happens here. And, Lord, send your spirit, we pray, in your name. Amen. We're going to have our first reading, which is uh, Psalm 71, just a few verses from there. And uh, a good way to start, I think. O Lord, you are my refuge. Never let me be disgraced. Rescue me, save me from my enemies, for you are just. Turn your ear to listen and set me free. Be to me a protecting rock of safety where I am always welcome. Give the order to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. My God, rescue me from the power of the wicked, from the clutches of cruel oppressors. O Lord, you alone are my hope. I trusted you, O Lord, from childhood. Sure, God will add his blessing to that reading today. We're going to have some intercessory prayer now, and I think someone's going to come up from the church and lead us in that, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Thanks. Father, with all the hunger and the general bad stabilization of the world at the moment, we need you to overrule. We need you to work your miracle. Lord, we pray for the food and fuel prices today. And again, Lord, we need you to work a miracle. Lord, for the countries that don't have enough food and fuel, I pray that you'll just bring about the opening the hearts of other countries. Lord, for the UK government, as it seeks to push others into having more commitment to this, I pray, Lord, that you will move and work a miracle. And Father, we pray for the countries of Ukraine who's at war with Russia, Israel, who are at war with, and Myanmar, Lord, as well, Lord. And we pray for any hostile, area, hostile areas of the world. Lord, we all know of some. Some mean more to us than others. And we just pray that your hand will be seen to be working. Lord, you're the only one who can work on your world at this time. You're the only one who can open the hearts of your people at this time. And Lord, I just pray that you'll do this. Lord, we pray for the Baptist Church for this month, this week. Lord, we pray for Dunton Baptist Church. And Lord, they, they've asked us to pray for three things. Pray for new people to help enlarge their group to pray for guidance of the leadership and of the, of the church, for guidance for the future as to where they should go and what they should do. And along the same lines, to pray for new ideas for that future. Lord, I pray those new ideas will be your ideas, not their ideas. And Lord, I pray that you will give the guidance for the future, not anyone else in the church. And Lord, lastly, I pray for our own church. I pray for Ron and Rosemary. I don't know the problem they're having, but I do know that you're in control. You're one of the few people who are. Lord, we pray for Paul Adams, who unfortunately has been given three to six months to live. Lord, we pray for Sylvia, who's very unwell. Lord, we pray for Joy, Ron and my daughter, Continue, who's continuing with her recovery from second-class um, cancer. 
And Lord, I pray for John with his continued healing at this time. Lord, we look to you. You're the only one who can work on these situations. You're the only one who can open our hearts to realise that our responsibility before you is to pray and to trust you. So Lord, I just bring these people to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Ken's going to lead us into some worship now, if she remembers that. <laughs> Thanks very much. Got quite involved in, in what was being prayed there this morning. I think um, we just need hope, don't we? <laughs> when we look around... Um, and within even we need his hope and his change um, do you ever have one of those mornings where you wake up and you think oh dear I'm not a very good Christian I've got all sorts of <laughs> negative thoughts running around my mind and weird attitudes but you know I think the Lord is in the business of making us more like him and some things have to come to the surface and die before we become more like him but I think he wants to encourage us this morning, wherever we are, we're at, if we hand that over to him, he will turn it into good and he will bring about his purposes. And perhaps sometimes we miss the fact that he is changing us, even through the, the more difficult things. So he's still God, he's still in control. That's why we want to welcome him with praise this morning. And that's our first song. We welcome you with praise. your brain. Let every soul awake, 
Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Father, we welcome you this morning. Lord, we're nothing without you. But you are everything. And we just praise and worship and adore you this morning for who you are. Amen. Might be more familiar with this one. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful. It's easy to praise him, isn't it, when everything is going well. Not always so easy when things aren't. But you know, he sees that offering that we bring him. He sees that thanks, even when we don't really feel like it. So let's just worship him this morning, wherever we're at. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, with the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name And blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. And blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory.
think we're going to take up the offering with this next song. And the only reason I remembered it is because this is called Cornerstone, and collection starts with a C. So we're going to sing Cornerstone while we take up the collection. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Sing that verse again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name, Christ hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy Just give thanks before the last verse. You're being so patient down there. You do. Lord, we thank you for this gift. We thank you for this money, Lord. And we pray that you'll take it, Lord, and multiply it, Lord, just as you did with the uh, 5,000 that were fed, Lord, and that you'll bring salvation to Shubury, mm. we pray, through this, through this money. In your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> when he shall come when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found lest in his righteousness alone Faultless, I'll stand before the throne, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Saviour's love through. This next song is, is actually quite an old one. It's one of my favourites, actually. Um, 
And, and I'm just feeling that maybe like me, there are some here that just need to be back in his arms of love, back in that secure place. Um, because we, we can't really be or do what we should be or be doing without that love in our heart. So we're just going to sing. I sing a simple song of love to my Saviour, to my Jesus. I sing a simple song of love to my Saviour, to my Jesus. I'm grateful for the things you've done, my loving Saviour, oh precious Jesus. Heart is glad that you called me your own, and there's no place I'd rather be than in your arms of love. In your arms of love, holding me. Sing a simple song of love to my Saviour, to my Jesus. I'm grateful for the things you've done, my loving Saviour, oh precious Jesus. My heart is glad that you called me your own, and there's no place I'd rather be than in your arms of love, in your arms of love. Father, would you come and hold us still, hold us near. When we don't understand, when we're waiting, when it's all not great, would you just hold us, hold us still, hold us near, but especially let us know that love. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I think Ron is going to now bring us a reading. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. The second reading is <coughs> excuse me, taken from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the land of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, the province of Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father chose you long ago, and the Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Jesus Christ and are cleansed by his blood. May you have more and more of God's special favour and wonderful peace. All honour to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> for it is by his boundless mercy 
that God has given us the privilege of being born again. Now we live with a wonderful expectation because Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. For God has reserved a priceless inheritance for his children. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And God, in his mighty power, will protect you until you receive this salvation, because you are trusting him. It will be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, even though it is necessary for you to endure many trials for a while. These trials are only to test your faith, to show that it is strong and pure. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, for your faith is far more precious to God than mere gold. So if your faith remains strong after being tried by fiery trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honour on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him, you trust him. And even now you are happy with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Your reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This salvation was something the prophets wanted to know more about. They prophesied about his this gracious salvation prepared for you even though they had many questions as to what it all could mean they wondered what the spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterwards they wondered when and to whom all this would happen they were told that they were told these things would not happen during their lifetime, but many years later, during yours. And now, this good news has been announced by those who preach to you in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. For that Ron. It's nice to hear it in a different version. It's really, really nice. Let us, uh, let us pray before we uh, think about God's word. Lord, we thank you for that word that you, uh, you speak to us, Lord, that living word uh, that means so much to us. Even as we, it was written 2,000 years ago, Lord, it still means so much to us and we praise you for it. We pray that it will continue to speak to us today, Lord. Speak through uh, your word to us and our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. I wanted to look at 1 Peter um, and the psalm as well uh, for various reasons which we'll come to later. Um, so much in that, those few verses that, uh, that uh, Ron just read. Um, I could go on, you could preach a sermon just on a few of the verses. Um, if you sort of look at the first verse, I better open it, hadn't I? If you look at the first, the first verse, you find it's talking about the fact that we are God's elect, and that the four, or the second verse actually, that He foreknew that you would believe, and we would believe, before we were born, in our mother's womb. He knew that, and through that, that foreknowledge, those who believe become. God's elect. And that's a bit more Romans there. But Romans talks about that, that through Christ's foreknowledge we have become his elect. And because of that, you can't be shaken from that faith that you have, which is a great message just in itself. First verse of the chapter talks about who, who uh, Peter was writing to. And you look there and you think, oh, he, was, he got around a bit. <laughs> These are people probably that he knew and had met. Um, and when you look at all those towns and areas that he looked at, you'd think he was, must have travelled just as much as Paul did. 
But actually, if you look at those towns and those places, they're all in a very small region. In fact, most of them are in present-day Turkey. And he was talking about the Christians in those lands that were close to him because Peter tended to stay in Jerusalem most of the time, didn't travel very much, but he was obviously the rock on which God had built his church. And so he, he stayed there as the, if you like, leader of the Christians in those days. That developed, as we know, into him uh, becoming more or less in the, the Catholic side of things, the, the, the Pope, basically. He was the first Pope. But that's what he was. Yet, we also look at Peter and we see that he was a failure. He was a failure. He had to have a change of name from Peter, from, uh, from Simon to Peter, so that he could become that rock. He was often admonished by Jesus, often, often told off by him. Very keen, but quite often got things wrong. And he failed a lot as well. And I don't know about you, but I'm like that. <laughs> and um, I think the psalm mentioned about, um, uh, I've got a, a trust in Jesus from my childhood, which I had, I, I say childhood. I wasn't brought up in the church, but I was 17 when I became a Christian. And I wasn't a very good Christian <laughs> when I was 17. It was in the 60s, and there were lots of temptations around and about in those days. And I often failed. And I often what I always considered lived a double life. There was a bit of me that wanted to go God's way, another bit of me that wanted to enjoy myself and go man's way. Peter was no different to us, and I'm sure that's true of all of you, that we've all failed and we've all got things wrong. In the end, he was forgiven, and, uh, and he changed. Now, some people might say that he changed on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given, and to a to a degree that was right. He got an extra strength from that. But he actually changed after Jesus' resurrection, didn't he? And if you recall, before the death of Jesus, he had denied Jesus three times and the cock crowed twice and he wept, the Bible says, because he realised he'd failed again, realised that he'd done wrong again. And quite often we need to weep when we do that and we need to come back to Jesus. After that, Jesus was resurrected and he met them on the beach and he had that famous conversation where he said to Peter, do you love me? Three times that happened and three times at the end, Peter got quite frustrated and said, you know that I love you, Lord. You know that I love you. That's when I think he changed, when he realised Christ's love for him. And that's when we change, when we realise the great love of Jesus for us in our lives. There was a little sentence, though, that Jesus said at the end of that, that little conversation, which said, went something like this. When you were young, you used to tie your own belt and walk around wherever you wanted to go. When you get older, somebody else will do that for you and you'll lead you to places where you don't want to go. And it says in the Bible that it was, that was an idea of him, uh, what was going to happen in his death because he was going to be carried to a cross like Jesus was. So tradition has it that he was crucified upside down, but we don't know that. But either way, he died a violent death. But I think it means more than that as well. It means that when we're young in the faith, we do tend to tie our own belts and walk around where we want to go. And sometimes that's not the right direction that we want to go. As a result of that, we get into all sorts of bother we lose our peace, we lose the presence of Jesus, we lose sight of him in our lives. At the end of that Peter verse, it says that we shall see God. I've been sort of reading a little bit of Spurgeon in the, this morning. Uh, the verse was, God sees us. In fact, the definition of God is, I think, um, theo in the Greek. That's where our word theology comes from, belief in God. But if you go back into the Greek, that word originally comes from he who sees. In fact, any religion believes that God will see. The Roman gods, the Romans believed that their gods would see them. And if they couldn't see them, they weren't gods, were they? 
and he sees us and he sees every part of our life. He sees our failures and our fears and he knows them. In the end, probably Peter was the one who knew Jesus the best because of all these conversations we had with him. But he certainly felt that sense of hopelessness when he failed. And sometimes we can feel that sense of hopelessness. You might wonder why I've chosen the two readings, because they've got one thing in common, and that's the word hope. Peter describes it as a living hope, and the psalmist says that our hope is in him. In fact, when you read the psalms, there's hundreds of times that expression comes up. Not hundreds, tens of times it comes up. My, my hope is in you. My hope is in him. My hope is in God. If you read Job all the way through that, you'll find that Job is saying, my hope is in God. My hope is in him. The Old Testament is full of that idea of hope. I just want to stop there for a minute. Let me read you that definition of hope from our dictionary. First of all, there's a, like most dictionaries, there's, there's a noun. And the, uh, the, the, uh, the noun says this, and it was actually in Ron's reading. Uh, he, the living hope became a living expectation. And that's what it means. A feeling of expectation and a desire for a particular thing to happen. When you move to the verb, to hope, okay, it's just, a f uh, uh, it's, something, it's, it's want something to happen or to be the case. When we read that word hope, we tend to think of the verb. We don't think of the noun. It's like wishing that I got a new car for Christmas or I owned a Ferrari or I wish that everything in my life went smoothly and nothing went wrong. A general hope. Biblical hope is different. One passage I haven't mentioned where it is mentioned is well, probably one of the ones that we read the most, 1 Corinthians 13. Right at the end, it says, There abideth these three, and the three are faith, hope, and love. Christian hope is a little bit different from man's hope. The verb means, I wish, I would, I wish this would happen. Hope in the Bible means an expectation that God's going to do it, that God will do it. So what do you hope for today? Peter hoped that he could uh, be put into a different position to that feeling, feeling of hopelessness. Peter wrote about us. He wrote about us being the elect. He wrote about us being chosen. But he also wrote about us are being a living hope. Our lives should be a living hope in Jesus, an expectation that no matter what our situation, God will come in. God will come in. Peter had the same sort of definition of it as Paul did. If you read, when you get home, Romans 5, verses 4 and 5, there's a famous verse, one of my favourite verses, which says that suffering produces perseverance Perseverance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not, does not disappoint us. Hope does not disappoint us because of all that Jesus did. Just think about those words for a minute because later on in Peter we'll have a look at it but he talks about suffering. But suffering produces perseverance. Peter says suffering Okay, is there for our good. It's, it's good for us because it actually teaches us to persevere. When you're feeling done, uh, when you're feeling upset, people perhaps have upset you. Some the, the most hurtful ones I found in my life have been where churches hurt you. People, in, people that you called your friends hurt you. All of those things happen to us in our lives. Certainly happened to Jan and I. Part of the reason why we go to the vineyard church is because of that. And we felt that we got healed there. But that suffering helped us to persevere, help us to keep going, and it does. Even in those times of disappointment when Jan was talking earlier, that suffering can help us persevere. What happens after we persevere? We develop character. Now, character 
today means something different to what hope does in a way, in the sense that it probably means, oh, he's quite a character. He's got um, a personality. That's not what the Bible word means. Um, it means I picked up a Bible today to, to read from. I've got a few Bibles at home. And I picked up this one, and it's called the Men of Integrity Devotional Bible, which I've had quite a few years. But it, that's exactly what character means, integrity. Integrity. That God can trust you and that people can trust you to know that uh, you are a person, a man or a woman of God. That's what perseverance and suffering produces. And then finally, it produces hope that no matter what that situation you're in, you can trust God. He is our living hope, Paul, uh, Peter says. Most of his hopelessness was there at Jesus' death, but his hope came with the resurrection. He had a new life. He had a living hope. The enemies of Jesus had won, so everybody thought, so Peter thought, so the disciples thought. But Jesus actually had the victory, didn't he? He actually overcame it. And it was so that we could have that living hope. Sometimes our situation seems hopeless, like Peter's. Switch that round. Switch that pain and that hurt and make it a situation of hope. What's our way of thinking in life? Is it a thinking of, oh, oh I've been hurt, oh, I'm in pain, oh, I'm suffering, oh, I don't know where, why God's allowed this to happen to me? I've said that loads of times in my life, and it's taken me quite a few years to actually stop when I start feeling like that and say to myself, wait a minute, my hope's in Jesus. Oh, we're going to trust him. Whatever my situation, I'll leave that with him. I'll, I'll persevere through it. I'll allow that to happen. And then God will change the situation. My hope's in him. I have to do that a lot in some of the work that Jen and I get involved in. We work in a prison and I help run a wood charity, which is basically dependent on the business being successful. And sometimes there's not enough money, uh, apparently, uh, to pay the people in the wood project. So we pray and say, well, Lord, you promised, this is your work, we promised that you would, you would provide. Just to give you a little story or an example of that, um, the, the wood project I'm involved in is basically we want to help ex-offenders and people with mental health problems get back into a work situation. It's based in Pitsy and Basildon, but it covers the whole of South Essex. And we employ three carpenters, uh, a driver and a manager and uh, they all need paying and our trade depends on, our payment depends on obviously grants that we apply for but also on our business side of it, of the charity which is basically underpricing, undercutting the price of a skip. Okay? And what we do is we go, it's a, a nationwide scheme, we'll go to national builders and say, don't throw your wood into a skip. Um, put it to one side and we'll undercut what that skip would cost you by about £100. I don't know if you know, but it's about 350 quid the price of a big skip now. That's a lot of money. And so our income comes from picking that up, bringing it back to our base in Pitsy at what Tyler Park. We then use that. We either sell that wood. If it's no good or not for good for anything, we get it chipped and it goes off to be burnt in the, uh, the power stations of uh, uh, places like Sweden and uh, those countries. If we, use, uh, we also get the people that we're trying to help, we train them to build things from that wood and there's a carpentry shop there. Quite a, quite a bit involved. Those of you that know the uh, building trade will know that the building trade's in the doldrums at the moment. And whereas we would hopefully get to be, if I say financially viable, we would hope to get probably about at least 30 collections from building sites a month to make us break even. And during uh, 
January and February, I think we had none in January and about 10 in February so far. So it's not particularly very good <laughs> income that we're getting. And we, we then begin to financially struggle. So we've prayed. And in the last two weeks, we've had £37,000 given to us. We put in a, for a grant a couple of months before Christmas um, and to the guild, was one of the guilds of London, um, and we said, well, we would like a new truck <laughs> or a newish truck, and we've got the price of a, an 18-month-old truck that's going to be you, Les, so we can drive in and out to London with it uh, and not have to pay the, the charge. Um, and they've come up with that, and it was £27,000. So they gave us £27,000 for a new truck. Also, a lady in another church has given, um, or a couple in another church, has given £10,000 to us. So that's kept us viable for these, these months. God has prov provided even in our difficulties. But we have to trust him. And we have to learn that our sufferings and our pain, that little trial that God has been sending us the last couple of months, is there to show that if our hope is in him, if we know that that work is for him, then it, it, he will provide. If you know in your lives that you want to work for Jesus, then he will provide what you need. might be that you'll get lots of disappointments on the way, but God can still use you and he'll restore you as he did with Peter and he'll restore what you can do for him. And that's what hope means doesn't disappoint us. Verse 4 of that passage says this, For God has reserved a priceless inheritance for his children. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of, tri of change and decay. Things in our world change and decay, but not in heaven. Our ultimate prize will be that it won't there. Yeah. And God in his mighty power, verse 5 says, will protect you until you receive this salvation because you are trusting him. It will be revealed on the last day. So be glad. Then he talks about those trials we mentioned. These trials are only to test your faith, to show that it is strong and pure. It is being tested as fire tests, purifying gold. And your faith is far more precious than that gold. So if your faith remains strong after being tried by fiery trials, it will bring praise and glory and honour on the day when Jesus is revealed. That song that Janet sang about, uh, Blessed be the name of the Lord, when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's as it should be. But it's also... He's also there, and blessed is his name, even when shadows come and darkness comes. If you're in a dark place this morning, look to Jesus for your hope. Look to him. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him, you trust him. And even now you are happy with glorious, inexpressible joy. That promise... It, Peter finishes off the passage by saying that angels love to look into that faith, love to look into our salvation, because that hope, although it's a picture in the Psalms, it became a reality when Jesus came in people's lives. It wasn't just kings and prophets that uh, were able to have this hope, but every person, every, every man, every woman, who has received that salvation of Jesus. Peter goes on to say that we should rejoice in our trials. That's what that song says. Blessed be the name of the Lord, even when we're going through dark times. We've got to learn in our lives to do that, even when things look bad, even when things are not going well. We need that blessed hope. We need that living hope that Jesus will sort the situation out. When we start to do that, he does. When we don't do it, he doesn't, because we're not actually looking to him to solve our problems. We're looking to ourselves, or we're looking to our own brains, or we're looking to what we think is the right solution. We have to give up that 
that, uh, that self-control, uh, that self-assurance, and make our assurance sitting on him and not on us. Hard to do. Hard to do. That's where I want to finish today, really, just to say that there is hope. Whatever situation you're in, give that to Jesus. Where you're hurting, give it to Jesus. Where there's, there's perhaps something that you can't understand that God's doing, don't do as I, a few, till a few years ago, used to do, and that is, why God's allowing this? Why is God allowing this to happen, happen to me? The answer is, he's allowing it to happen to you so that you trust him, so that you rely on him, so that your faith is a living hope in him. As usual, if you want some prayer at the end, after Jan sung the, the last song, then please come up to one of us and, and we'll be happy to pray with you and, and hopefully uh, uh, give you some hope uh, through Jesus. Amen. Thanks. Jan's going to uh, sing a song and uh, then we'll have a blessing at the end. We're going to sing a song together. Um, I just really felt this one was right for today. I speak Jesus, but you know, it's not me speaking Jesus. It's us together. And as we sing it, we might just want to um, be aware of a situation or a person um, or whatever it is that's on your heart and mind, that you just want Jesus to be a part of that. You just want him um, to come into that situation, to make that difference. It's not always the difference or happens the way we expect, but it will be the best when we are asking for Jesus to come in. So let's sing that together. You can stand with me or you can feel... Uh, Comfortable sitting, that's fine too. But let's just speak the name of Jesus over these situations. Because it is only him that's going to make a difference. Even in our internal struggles. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is light. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus His name is power Break every stronghold, 
shines through the shadows, burn like a fire. Shout, shout Jesus from the mountain, and Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout, shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. No, I just think we need to sing that <clears throat> again. Let's just forget the music. And let's just really think about those, <clears throat> those mountains, those nations, those people in the streets where the enemy, it's darkness is apparently triumphant. And for our family, um, let's just speak his holy name. Let's just get the right note. <laughs> Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for our families I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for our families I speak the holy name Jesus your name is shadows burn like a fire I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know just say the blessing. May the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this week, Lord, and help us to speak your name over our minds, Lord, and our hearts. And may your presence go with us, Lord. May we speak your name all week long, we pray. In your name. Amen.